Hello everybody, it's Pastor Ross. Today we're going to be diving into the fifth commandment. I'm really excited to talk about this, so let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Is the fifth commandment. You shall not murder. Now, what's that mean? Well, Martin Luther wrote, We should fear and love God so that we do not hurt or harm our neighbor and his body, but help and support him in every physical need. So the negative aspect of this commandment, we don't cause physical harm to our neighbor. The positive aspect to this commandment is that we help and support our neighbor in every physical need. In other words, God created us to care about other people and to help them in their times of need. So who's our neighbor? That's a great question somebody once asked that of Jesus. And if you go to Luke 10, 25 through 37, what are you going to find? The story of the Good Samaritan, which is a great story about who is our neighbor. And the answer is, well, it's everybody around us. Everybody in the world is our neighbor. So how do we fear and love God in keeping this commandment? Well, we don't harm our neighbor. That's the first one. We don't harm our neighbor. And what does that include? Well, we don't murder our neighbor. Murder is the taking of, of another person's life without just cause. We don't uh, say something that, that injures our neighbor or endangers another person's life. You know, the whole shouting fire in a crowded theater, right? We, we don't do that and, and risk or endanger our neighbor's life. We uh, don't neglect to assist people in bodily need. You know, you see somebody who... who has a bodily need, you are to assist them. This is why our church runs a, a food bank, and, and there's lots of different ways that you can help do this and help somebody who, who might be in need. We don't harbor anger or hatred in our hearts against our neighbor. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, but, but one of the things that we want to talk about here is, okay, but what if I'm being, you know, attacked? What if somebody breaks into my house? What am I supposed to do there? You know, I can't harm my neighbor. Well, remember what the positive aspect of this commandment is, is that we, that we assist those in need, that we protect our neighbor, right? So if somebody breaks into your house, you have, you, you can defend yourself. The Bible does not condemn self-defense or defending your neighbor through a physical means. And, and so that you can defend yourself or defend your family, defend your neighbor if, if you're in immediate physical harm from somebody. So the positive aspects of this, of fearing and loving God by looking after the physical well-being of our neighbor. So what does this look like? Well, kind of already talked about it. We come to the aid of our neighbor. We speak in a way that helps and defends our neighbor. And we treat our neighbor with kindness and compassion. So what do we need to remember about our neighbor when dealing with issues in society? Well, the first thing we need to remember is that life is precious in God's sight. That uh, you only get one life on this earth. That he originally created us in our, our image. That he sent Jesus Christ for the whole world. That uh, God came in our flesh. So life is important. And, and so there is a special dignity or worth from the moment of conception onward. So what are some specific issues that this commandment touches on in our society? Well, the first one that, that everybody gets up in arms about, and, and when we talk about this, is, is abortion. This commandment forbids abortion, or I should qualify that, forbids elective abortion. And so any abortion that, that's not done for, for a medical reason um, is, you know, Forbidden. Now, is there grace for somebody who's repentant about that, a, a woman who's repentant about having an abortion? Absolutely. And they shouldn't be hit with the law about this. They should be told the gospel that Jesus Christ died for their sins and that their sins are forgiven in his name. 
The second thing that this commandment does is it forbids, in our society, it forbids suicide, assisted suicide, euthanasia. You know, we have this mindset in our society that a life is only valuable for what it can produce. And so there are undesirable people, people with disabilities. You know, I saw a headline a couple years ago about how Iceland was bragging that they've almost eliminated Down syndrome. And it's because they put in place a system that aborts any baby that will potentially have Down syndrome. That's awful. That is, that is absolutely awful. That's not something to brag about. Um, now, an important caveat there, if somebody is, is near death and certain treatments may only prolong suffering but not enable either recovery or physical well-being, in such cases, it's important to note that allowing death to occur when somebody is irreversibly dying is different from causing death. All right, we don't just prolong life for the sake of prolonging life. When we talk about the dignity of life, we talk about conception to natural death. Um, and so just an important point there. This commandment forbids abuse of children, abuse of a spouse, you know, domestic violence. It, it forbids that. It forbids engaging in reckless and self-destructive behavior. Um, and it forbids hating, despising, or slandering other groups of people. That's prejudice, racism, you know, so on and so forth, whatever name you want to put it. People aren't superior because of, you know, where they're born or their skin color or anything like that. And, and putting somebody down on a lower rung or hating somebody because of their skin color or, or something like that is wrong. You're murdering them in your heart. They're, you're saying that they're not worthy of God's love. Only you are. You're putting yourself in the place of God. You're breaking a whole host of, of different things, of different commandments by, by doing that. And it is quite simply forbidden and wrong. So those are some of the things that this commandment touches upon. And it kind of ends us with the question of, well, is there ever a case that somebody can uh, take another person's life. And you know, Romans 13, 4 speaks to this. Paul, in speaking of earthly authorities, says, For he is God's servant for your good, but if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrong doer. So governments can have in place, you know, the death penalty, they can engage in just wars, things like that. And an important note there that there's not a consensus on this in Christ Christendom and Christianity, um, and you can, in good conscience, you know, object to a definition of a good of, of just war. You might want it stricter. Um, you can, in good conscience, object to to the death penalty. There are Christians on both sides of that. Now, the government has the authority to engage in those things if it wants to engage in those things, but it doesn't necessarily have to. And so we can disagree about that in good conscience. I hope you learned a little bit about the fifth commandment today. Let's dive right back in with our devotion. O Lord, have mercy upon us. O Christ, have mercy upon us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. We pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We pray for pardon, growth and grace, and divine protection. O Lord our God, we acknowledge your great goodness toward us, and praise you for the mercy and grace that our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have known. We sincerely repent of the sins of this day and those in the past. Pardon our offenses, correct and reform what is lacking in us, and help us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Inscribe your law upon our hearts to, uh, and equip us to serve you with holy and blameless lives. May each day remind us of the coming of the night when no one can work. And the emptiness of this present age, keep us united by a living faith through the power of your Holy Spirit, with him who is the resurrection and the life, that we may escape the eternal bitter pains of condemnation. By your Holy Spirit, bless the preaching of your word and the administration of your sacraments. Preserve these gifts to us and all Christians. 
Guard and protect us from all dangers to body and soul. Grant that we may with faithful perseverance receive from you our sorrows as well as our joys, knowing that health and sickness, rich, riches and poverty, and all things come by your permission of your fatherly hand. Keep us this day under your protective care and preserve us, securely trusting in your everlasting goodness and love. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We conclude, Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.